Hello and thank you for choosing to buy an Alec Classic 14 or 17L powered with a Lonson petrol engine. The purpose of this video is to get you prepared and ready to receive your mower and to set up for mowing safely. When your mower arrives before accepting delivery, please make sure that there is no obvious damage to the outside of the carton. If there is, please make the driver wait, open up the carton and have a look inside and just be sure that there is no transit damage to your mower. Please don't sign for a product or accept delivery if you're not certain that your mower has arrived in good condition. The 14 inch mower weighs 38 kilograms and the 17 inch 41 and a half kilograms. So you will need some help to move the carton from curbside and you may have ordered optional cartridges as well which may be in the carton, making it even heavier. Cartridges might also be delivered separately, so make sure the driver leaves you all of the cartons that you need. You'll need to make sure that all the cartons are in good condition too. The packaging around your mower is mostly cardboard, which is very easily recycled at recycling centres. We also use this low density uh, polyethylene foam uh, to protect the mower from transport impacts and it's very good packaging material hard wearing protects the machine and stops it from moving around in the box but please consider whether you could reuse this packaging uh, but if you can't it is recyclable at most recycling centers please retain the carton and all the packaging that goes with your machine for a period of 14 days store it in a dry place uh, in the unlikely event that you're not happy with your mower or if there's any faults with it and you want to return or exchange it then you will need to repack the mower in the original packaging before we can organise to collect your mower. Inside the carton you're going to find your new classic petrol mower, the grass box, the grass box cradle and inside the grass box there's a polythene bag with these contents. We have a quick start guide, a pictorial on how to get started. There is a QR code on this sheet which will, uh, when scanned, lead you back to this video so that you'll be able to review it at the time that you're putting your mower together. This sheet is made on a plastic paper and it's tear proof and rot proof so you can keep it in the shed and refer to it with uh, other hints and tips on how to use your mower and a troubleshoot. The Lonsin engine manual. A paper postal product registration card. We would rather that you register your product on uh, our website. A classic mower manual. The spark plug spanner. A 5mm Allen key. Three cable clips. And finally a flyer telling you about an optional cartridge that will fit into this machine as part of your lawn care. This video is quite long and if you look below in the description box you will see that we've indexed by times the different sections of this video so that if you do need to refer to it later you can scroll through and get to the section you want much more quickly without having to watch the whole video. So please go to our website first and register this product for warranty. If you look at the rear of the machine, there is a silver plaque here which has the serial number and the model number of your mower which you will need at point of registration. So here the mower is and the first thing we're going to do is to put the handlebars into the mowing position. Be sure that none of these cables are tangled around the back because as we lift this up 
we don't want to be stretching any of the cables and once the two tubes are aligned here then we just have a wing nut here that we need to tighten that up. It doesn't need to be really tight, just needs to be hand tight and firm enough. So feel the handlebars until they're tightened up firmly enough. Once we've done that, we have a few cables here which are a little untidy and of course they could get caught as you're running alongside the hedge. So we have the three cable clips that we took out of the bag and what we're able to do is to just tidy up these cables by putting them into the clips. Three locations, uh, it's not particularly critical, just do it the best way. One of the important things when you're routing the cables is these cables could sit in a position where they're not sitting squarely into the grommet and these, comp these cables control the drive to both the cylinder and the rear roller. So when you're doing the routing, make sure that you do it in such a way that the cables end up being sitting into here in a square way. And then that way we know that the clutching is sorted correctly. To check, to double check that the cables are routed correctly, just check that your rear roller runs freely like so and that means that while this bail bar is in the down position that the clutch isn't engaged because the cable routing isn't correct. Your mower arrives with the engine with no oil in it and no fuel. It would just be too dangerous to transport it with fuel. Uh, there is a bright yellow tab on the petrol cap reminding you that there is no oil in the engine. If you start the engine without oil, it will result in damage. Let's look at how we put the oil into the engine. Depending on how you purchase your machine, oil will either be included in the carton or you'll need to buy it separately. You need to check that out at the time of purchase. If you buy your mower from an Allet Lawn Centre or a dealer, then you, they will have uh, pre-delivery inspected, PDI'd the machine uh, and the engine will have been filled with oil. But you will just need to check that and you do that with the dipstick just here. This is a typical one litre bottle of engine oil and the oil type is an SAE 10W30. We're going to need 350 millilitres of this oil in the engine before we start it. So first let's check whether there's any oil in the engine and we do that by unscrewing the dipstick and oil filler at the front. By looking at the dipstick you will see whether there's already oil in it by looking at the oil on the hashed area of the dipstick. We need to fill the oil and the easiest way to do that is to tip the machine back onto the handlebars where it's nice and safe and now that's much easier to fill. You will need a funnel to pour the oil in without spillage or as this bottle has, it has an extended teat so that I can unscrew the top and then that is much easier to fill from here. So either use a measuring jug for the 350 millilitres you need or with this bottle I have a window on the side here and I know that I need to leave 650 millilitres in here to have, uh, to have emptied out 350 millilitres into the engine. At this point I'm going to mention that you will need to change the engine oil after the first 20 hours of use and then thereafter we recommend you change the oil every six months or 100 hours. To change the oil, the drain plug is accessed here. Please capture the oil in a sealable container and then take that oil to your local recycling station when you next visit. Please do not dispose of used engine oil either down the drain or in your bin. 
The fuel also needs to go into the fuel tank. We don't transport the machines with fuel, that would be too dangerous. And the fuel cap is removed like so. That is the ticket reminding you to fill the oil. And then we put the fuel in here. Make sure the cap is secured firmly afterwards because if you're going on a, over uneven ground you will get spillage. The fuel that is used in your classic mower is a standard unleaded fuel of 86 octane rating or higher. Please remember that fuel is highly flammable so no smoking and make sure that you fill up in a well ventilated area. Make sure that your fuel is stored safely and out of reach of children. When the engine is hot and you've maybe run out of fuel, uh, please allow the engine to cool down before you fill the tank up again with fuel because if you do get any spinach uh, and it was to fall on the hot engine or the muffler, there is the risk of ignition. Here's a tip. Uh, the most common problems experienced with small engines are related to fuel. Problems such as difficulty with starting or an engine that doesn't run at a consistent speed is nearly always related to a fuel problem, usually dirty, contaminated or stale fuel. It's very important that you keep your fuel clean in storage and to keep it in a container that is not metal and painted where the, uh, the paint will flake uh, or the rust even may get in and contaminate the fuel. Uh, this causes blockages in the mower's fuel system. We do recommend the use of fuel stabilizers uh, and these are additives and there are several different fuel stabilizers on the market. This keeps the fuel fresher for longer. Petrol actually goes stale after about 30 days of purchase and the fuel stabilizers will help give less starting and running problems. Uh, the other even better alternative is to buy a specialist fuel called Aspen, that's A-S-P-E-N, which has no ethanol content, is purer and stays fresh for years. Uh, it's quite expensive, but when you're using just a, a little in a lawnmower, then that doesn't really matter so much compared with starting problems. So, next thing we're going to do is fit the grass box cradle and the grass box. The steel grass box cradle is what supports the grass box and once we fit it we leave it on the machine. Uh, there are two pins and it fits this way up. You take this pin and fit it inside the hole on the inside of the cartridge and then by pushing in the tube I can get the second pin into the other side. Once that's done, you will see that the grass box cradle has two positions. One, ready to receive the grass box, but I also have a storage position in order to make this more compact for storage. I lower that back down into the position for the grass box, and the grass box itself, you will see, has a special shape here in order to fit. So make sure that you get that to fit snugly inside there and that all fits quite firmly to give us the grass box location. So we've got oil in the engine and fuel in the tank. Uh, now we're going to go through the starting procedure. It's very simple with this mower. The red knob at the front needs to turn from the off to the on position and that's clearly labelled. On the side we have the choke lever and we're going to move that from open to closed. That is in the forward position for starting. And then we just need to give it a little bit of throttle too, so we'll move the throttle about third of full. Once we've done that, this is the starting or recoil handle. I'm just going to pull that until I can feel the recoil engage and then I'm going to give that a good firm pull in order to get that to start. When you've finished and the engine has started, don't just release it like that, it will damage the recoil, but return it safely while the engine is running. When first starting a brand new machine, it might take a few pulls in order to get the fuel 
to run through to the carburetor. Once the engine is running, you can then turn the uh, choke off, and that is to the rearward position, and the engine will then run more smoothly. I can then adjust the throttle so that the engine doesn't stall, but until the engine's warmed up, you may need to just have a little bit of throttle and run it more quickly. Let's look at how we use the mower now. Please remember that the fumes from an internal combustion engine uh, are poisonous. They contain carbon monoxide and high levels of the lung damaging particulate matter 2.5. Do not start or run the engine inside your garage or inside a building. Do this outside in the open air and take care not to breathe in the discharge from the muffler. The muffler has a warning symbol on it and of course like any muffler on any vehicle or engine it does get hot. There, there is protection over this muffler uh, but make sure that you don't touch it and that you don't spill any fuel on it. Don't allow children around the mower either during or after operation uh, because the engine area will still be hot for quite some time. Let's have a look at the controls to drive the mower. Once the engine is started then we can control the machine and go mowing by controlling uh, from the handlebar position. We'll need to have the throttle that, uh, at a position that, that gives the engine speed that we want, uh, but the controls are at the back here. So look at this red toggle. It's part of the two-stage switching for the drive of the cylinder. So in order to drive the cylinder once the engine is running, I need to push forward the red toggle and then lift this right hand half bail bar. If I release it, everything will fail to safe, but if I just lift the bail bar on its own, it doesn't engage the cylinder drive. I must do this two stage, pushing the red toggle forward and then lifting the bail bar in order to drive the cylinder. I can push the mower now, and because the cylinder is turning, it will mow, but it is harder work than is necessary, but sometimes that's useful to be able to do it in a small or confined area. What I'll more normally do is have the rear roller driving on this machine. So once I've started the cylinder, red toggle forward, right hand bail bar up, I can then lift this bail bar up and the machine will then move away and the engine will drive the rear roller. Once I'm driving along, I can actually release the right-hand cylinder drive bail bar because it's retained by the left. If anything were to go wrong or if I need to stop, if I release everything on the handlebar, both the rear roller and the cylinder both fail to safe and stop immediately. If I just want to drive the mower on its own without the cylinder driving, so I might be driving back to the shed or garage, I just lift the left-hand bail bar and because I didn't push the red toggle, then the machine will drive forward without the cylinder driving. And that, that's always a great way to transport the machine and prevents any damage to the cylinder if we were to come across any stones or gravel. Again, if I release it at any point, then everything fails to safe. If I ever need to switch the engine off at any point, I just go to the front of the machine and I turn the engine to the off position and that will stop the engine immediately. Now we know how to drive the mower, we now need to adjust the height of cut of the mower um, so that we can go mowing. Let's just talk about that. On this machine it's very simple. The position of the front roller on the ground is what determines the height of cut. And there is a dial on the side here and it is numbered. There is an S and then one, two, three, four, five. And each one of those positions represents a different height of cut. So the S position when you're mowing is six millimeters or quarter of an inch. Number one is nine millimeters or three eighths of an inch. Number two is 12 millimeters or half an inch. Three, 19 millimeters, three quarters of an inch. Setting four, is 26 millimetres or one inch and finally five is the very height, highest height of cut at 32 millimetres or an inch and a quarter. To change the height of cut to any one of those I just take the weight off the front roller with the handlebars 
and then I push the dial in and then rotate it. And you can see the roller turns position. And I can select each one of those. On this mower, I have a choice of any one of those six heights of cut, but I can't go in between. So what height of cut do you actually choose? When you're first using your mower, uh, the height of cut, there is a really important rule which we'd like you to understand for mowing of, of a fine lawn. And that rule is about the third of the height of the plant rule. Do not mow more than one third of the height of the plant off in one go. So for example, if your grass is say 30 millimeters high, you should be mowing at no lower than 20 millimeters. Measure the height of your grass and do not take off more than one third of the height of the plant. And if you want to have a grass, that, a lawn that is lower than that, then you just need to mow more regularly and then take the height down. There is nothing like regular and frequent mowing with a small amount of grass clippings to achieve a really wonderful lawn with very strong stripes. So before you start mowing, it's always a good idea to check that the cylinder is also set to the bottom blade and that they're adjusted correctly. These are adjust adjusted on our assembly line and your mower should be delivered ready to cut paper. But it's good practice just to double check that the setting is absolutely right and it hasn't moved in transport. So we're going to take a piece of paper and we're going to test the cutting of the cylinder. So I'm taking an ordinary piece of uh, uh, false cap paper and I've just folded that in two. And then what I'm going to do is feed that in between the red cylinder and the black ground bottom blade. And what I'm going to do is by feeding it in between there, I can just check that the side, the middle and the other side, that the cylinder is cleanly cutting just like scissors all the way across. If you need to adjust the cylinder's bottom blade, it is a standard adjustment and there is a screw here and here where the cylinder can be adjusted to the bottom blade. If you follow the link on the website, then you will find more instructions on how to test and adjust the cylinder. One of the great things about this mower is you can actually change it from being a great cylinder mower into actually a great scarifier and if you want a great lawn you do need to do cultivations. The leaflet inside the box outlines the lawn scarifier cartridge which is an optional extra for this machine. The cylinder cartridge is removed and the scarifier cartridge is put in its place and if you look at the link on this page you will see another video which talks in more detail about how to remove the cylinder and put the scarifier cartridge in and also how to use it. This scarifier will remove the thatch and the dead organic material which is an essential operation to having a beautiful lawn. When you finish mowing and your mower is covered in grass clippings, before you put it away, we recommend that you clean it down using either a light hand brush or you can even use a leaf blower just to remove all the debris. We don't recommend spraying this down with a high pressure washer. Uh, it's not recommended because you're forcing water into places that we don't want water. Uh, another tip is on this exposed metal edge of the blades here that of course that metal can corrode and when you're putting it away in storage we can prevent that from happening by just brushing some light engineering oil or WD-40 on those edges to prevent any rusting while it is in storage. When it's in storage we can take up less space uh, and the way that we do that is to drop the handlebars back using the reverse of the operation we did at the beginning of the video uh, just by loosening off the wing nut here and then that will allow us to fold the handlebars up. Just do be careful of the cables just here. We can drop the handlebars down and then our grass box can sit on top in order to reduce the amount of space that we're going to take. To keep your mower performing well, and more importantly, your lawn grasses cut cleanly, 
you need to keep the blades sharp. We recommend that you have your blades sharpened annually at your local Allet service centre. Uh, they all have the facility to be able to grind the cylinders and the bottom blades. You can remove the cartridge out of the machine. Uh, there are videos on how to do that. And servicing uh, them without then having to transport the whole of the mower in the boot of your car. You can just take the cartridge itself. But your whole mower does need servicing by a specialist service dealer each winter anyway. Uh, so we've seen how the machine will fold up in order to go into quite a small car. We talked about oil changes earlier and there are other things that you need to do to the engine and the mower in order to make sure that you get uh, a really long life out of the machine and no breakdowns during the mowing season. And this does require the specialist knowledge of our uh, dealer network. As an in-season alternative to having the cylinders uh, ground by your service dealer, you can do a backlapping operation where you can turn the cylinder in reverse and apply backlapping paste. And see the video on the screen now, uh, which will link you to the video that shows you all about how to do backlapping on an Allet mower. Let's talk about safety now. Remember that the blades are sharp. Even when they're not rotating, you can cut yourself. So please wear gloves when you're working in the blade area and keep a well away from the blade area when the mower is running. And that includes when you're removing the grass box and even pushing grass clippings back into the grass box. When you're making adjustments to the machine, the engine must not be running and the mower should be disabled. Always keep bystanders and especially children at least two meters away from this mower. Bear in mind when you've finished mowing that the engine is hot for some time afterwards. So be sure not to touch the engine and to keep children away. We have a lot of resources to help you achieve the lawn that you want with over 150 videos on our YouTube channel. We really hope this video has, be, has helped you prepare for the arrival of your new mower and that you enjoy many years of trouble-free mowing and amazing lawn. So now, go and make your neighbours jealous. <laughs>